Okay, thank you, Kevin. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Wen Dali. So I'm a county uh, research associate working with Larry Poston at the University of Cambridge. Uh, so here I am. In the real world, we care about real formula, first order formulas over the real numbers. And we have built tools to reason with such formulas, like this ray mathematical or maple. And uh, they are the same procedures. Now we have proof assistant. So, um, so in this talk, I will present the exploration to bring those techniques from computer algebra system and the SMD solvers to the world of proof assistant that we can have a little bit more trustworthy computing. So the story starts with Alfred Tatsky in the 1930s. And uh, this is very groundbreaking. And we know that the first order series of real closed field is complete and uh, decidable. What does it mean? It means that there's a decision procedure that we can use to decide the truth value of all first order formulas like this. And uh, yeah, that's so cool. And how does it work? So the, the trick, the essential part is uh, this so-called sperm Tatsky theorem, sometimes also referred as Tatsky theorem. And the uh, important thing is that given two univariant polynomials and an interval, we can compute this so-called task query. So what on the right-hand side of this equation is something we can execute. It's just some uh, kind, of, kind of remainder sequence and assign evaluations. And uh, this left-hand side is a so-called task query. So what is task query? A path query is something, it's just a sum of signs of some polynomial over roots of another polynomial. So this, this looks kind of fabulous. So is it, is it just a real number? Um, yeah. Qx is 0, 1, or minus 1. What do you What's SGF? Is that? Zero, one, or minus one. <coughs> uh, S? SGA in the middle, on the right. You're summing over SGA. Second. This, this one? Nouns, right. Oh, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. So this is just the sign. So zero, one, or minus one. Yeah, 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 exactly, sorry. I forget to explain about that. Okay, so, uh, what's, and sometimes if we consider if this Q becomes one, and the, the computation of task query becomes like just we are count the number of distinct real root over some interval. So, and this is just uh, this famous term theorem. And how can we use this computable task query to like to decide the truth value of a uh, real, the truth value of some first order formula? Here is a uh, Simple, here is a simple example. Suppose we want to decide the truth value of this first order sentence. And we have C as some, we have C as some kind of cardinality. And then the truth value of this sentence becomes uh, that we want, is equivalent to the, this cardinality is greater than zero. And luckily, the value of these cardinalities has a linear relation with some Tusky queries. So the right-hand side of this equation is just the vector of Tusky queries, which we can effectively compute using 
the sperm particle serum, and then we, and what we are doing, just we solve this equation, then we are done. So what happens if we have more polynomials in this formula? The thing is that if in this case, we we'll need to solve a system with not just three equations. We are solving it. We are solving a system with nine equations, and this is just a tensor product. So as we can see, even in the univariant case, the number of the complexity of the decision procedure grows exponentially with respect to the number of polynomials. And uh, in the general case, what we are doing is just we apply this task query recursively to reason about the size of the coefficient. <laughs> and in this case, the situation becomes even worse. So it's, the complexity is not elementary. What does it mean? It means that the complexity is a tower, and the height of this tower is linearly bounded to the number of variables we have. This sperm particle theorem has been formalized in all major systems like Hawk, PVS, CW, Holite. And, uh, but this decision procedure is so elegant. It has been implemented in Hawk, Holite, and PVS as a decision procedure to reason about formula. Uh, to reason about real formulas. And the core conversion has been implemented by one of the speaker yesterday, Sergio Cohen. And uh, among these three, I believe the PVS one is probably the most uh, efficient. Uh, due to some technical reasons, they only deal with univariant cases, but they have used some uh, advanced data structures to make it uh, quite efficient. So, can we do better? George Collins told us, yes, we can, in 1976. And the uh, idea is so-called cylindrical algebraic decomposition. Although, Xiang yesterday told us this CAD is not efficient because of its, although it's good, it's, it's, it's good compared to the task key in the elimination procedure, but it is still of double exponential complexity. But uh, in the end, if we want to deal with first order formulas in a symbolic way, that is the uh, best we can have right now. Is that a theorem that we can't do better? Hmm? What? Are there no lower bounds for complexity? If the um, quantifier alternate, that is a Yes, that is over bound. So that is the lower bound we can do. But if the uh, if there's only one quantifier, it's like purely existential or purely universal. Uh, theoretically, there's a method called um, uh, interior point uh, method. It is theoretically better. It's only single exponential. But uh, I think in the in the reality, it's not been efficiently implemented yet. So it's like your CAD is like is the one we have in most uh, uh, system like mathematical maple or these three to deal with nonlinear real formulas. So what is CAD? <laughs> the idea is first it's uh, decomposition of the plane, and uh, so as you can see, this the uh, first. Uh, so it decomposes the plane into cells, and the first one corresponds to this red region, and the second one co corresponds to this a little bit red arc, and then the fourth one corresponds to this lower, like, line. And uh, so it's a decomposition, and uh, also it's a it's a decomposition with respect with respect to some polynomials and uh, such that like each uh, given two cells they are not going to be overlapped and also the sign of each polynomial will be constant over each cell 
And here there's a technical term we use. Uh, we say that this set of polynomial is adapted to this computation, to this decomposition. Uh, in, in practice, usually we draw sample point from the decomposition. And because of that, because we know that the size of each polynomial is invariant over each cell, so that this sample point becomes very representative. So the first order formulas like this, we can, to decide its truth value, we can just evaluate the sign of each polynomial over each sample point. So this, this is a, just a simple example. And even if the quantifier alternates, there's X, S4 exists, so just uh, with a little bit uh, variation, we can do something very similar. Okay, now we know that it's a decomposition, the sample point, but uh, where does this cylindrical come from? To define cylindrical, first we need this definition of stack. So what is a stack? So a stack is just uh, given some connected set and uh, it can be a cylinder. Over this connected set, we can have a cylinder and it is a decomposition of this cylinder such that the cells we have are layered. And uh, here is an example of a stack from a previous example. So that is uh, connected set is uh, open interval from minus square root two to square root two. And with these three continuous function, F1, F2, F3, we can divide it, this cylinder into layered cells like this, like the following. Okay, then with the idea of stack, we can define cylinder. So what is a cylinder? Cylinder is a recursive <coughs> structure. In the base case, it is just the decomposition of the real line. It, uh, we decompose the real line into open intervals and uh, a number of points. And in the inductive case, the idea is that the lower dimension is some cylindrical decomposition and over each cell of that, de that decomposition, we can build a stack. Okay, then now we know what is the cylindrical decomposition is and what is the algebraic come from. The algebraic is actually has been uh, mentioned by the speaker yesterday. So if each cell over this decomposition is semi-algebraic, so then we say overall this decomposition is cylindrical algebraic decomposition. Okay, now we know that what CAD is and we know it's useful, but the problem is that how can we compute it? The central idea is about this so-called uh, uh, the linearability theorem. The theorem is kind of long, but you can just ignore the assumptions for now. So what we can just look at the, com the conclusions. The final part of the theorem, it says that the, under some assumptions, the number of distinct real rules will be invariant even uh, when the coefficient of some polynomial like varies over some connected set. So the, I think the most important part of the uh, theorem is in the conclusions. And what does this conclusion mean? It actually means that only in this case, we can build a stack on the top of this connected set C. 
Now I will just uh, briefly describe the uh, procedure, the DCE procedure. So the thing is that, so first uh, we will have a set of polynomials, multivariate, and then the, what will return is a set of n-dimensional sample points. And the decision procedure is roughly divided into three parts. The first part is the projection phase. So what does projection phase mean? The projection phase is that um, each time we apply this project operation to a set of polynomials, and then we reduce the number of, vari the number of variables by one. And the actual definition of this project, uh, this project operator is linked to the assumptions of this previous theorem. So it usually involves with sub result and calculations or something like that. And so, so, so each time we project, we reduce, we, we eliminate one variable. And uh, what is the idea? The idea is that the, if, the, if a set is sign invariant over the projected set of polynomials, then because of the theorem, we can construct a stack that is adapted to the original set of polynomials. So after that, it's a base case. Base case is just to deal with a set of univariate polynomials, such that we can, uh, essentially, it's just the root isolation. So we, with root isolation, we can divide the real line into uh, like a set of open, open intervals and uh, points. And finally, it's the lift phase. In the lift phase, we start with sample point from lower dimension, and then we level by level, we lift this sample point to higher dimensions. And the, the basic idea is that we instantiate the coefficient using sample point from previous uh, dimension, from lower dimension, and then we apply the base case again. So it's kind of root isolation. Okay, here is a simple example. So in the previous case, we have a set of bivariate polynomials. And after the projection phase, we have a set of univariate polynomials. And then we do the base case. The, we have three roots. We have four roots, minus square root of three and minus square root of two, square root of two and the square root of three. And then now, so this is a sample, this uh, sample point uh, of dimension one. And then we lift, so we lift, and the idea of lift is just to instantiate the coefficient using sample point from the previous dimension, and then we do this root isolation again. So in the end, we have this set of sample point on dimension two. Okay, now we know what roughly this CAD is, and we know roughly how to calculate them, but how to like correctly implement them like in a decision, like in a proof of system or on like some untrusted, using some untrusted code bases kind of, uh, there are some subtleties. But actually to try, if we try to implement a CAD procedure, uh, one of the biggest tricky part is the uh, is we is about this so-called real algebraic numbers. As you can already see, this sample point we have uh, in our examples contains 
numbers like square root of two, square root of three. <laughs> These numbers are real algebraic numbers. And uh, so first of all, what we need to do is we need to encode this real algebraic number. To encode them, usually we use a polynomial, which can be a poly univariate polynomial with rational coefficient or integer coefficient. And then we need some uh, root isolation, root selection strategy to identify the number we are talking about is which root of this polynomial. It can be uh, an index, an integer, to, so this is like the first root of this polynomial, or it can be some advanced stuff like Tom encoding. But here, usually we are using just a uh, rational interval so that this root we are talking about is the only root of this polynomial within this interval. So an example is, so in, in proof of system, we encode this square root of two as the triple, so it's the polynomial x squared minus two and then an interval zero two, so such that square root two is the only root within this interval. And also, the, we know that real algebraic numbers are closed under normal arithmetic, which means that if we try to add two algebraic numbers, we can find uh, a polynomial such that uh, square root two plus square root three is the root of this polynomial and uh, some interval to isolate this. So, are you carrying around from that to suggest that there's only one root between A and B? What? Your... So, you're saying there is only one root between A and B, but I mean, are you carrying around some data to prove that? Uh, not yet. We can mm, prove it when we uh, get such encodings from external. It's, it's not very hard. We can use something like a decade root of size to like a root test to very efficiently to check if the root is the only root within an um, interval. It's, it's very efficient. So here, like when we are trying to implement real algebraic numbers in a proof of system, like usually we just want to do the normal way, the most the street of, the most the straightforward way, which is just to implement the uh, the, uh, uh, the arithmetic. Because under this, actually the like in the, for the first case the if we add two real algebra numbers, the deciding polynomial can be found using a uh, bivariate resultant. So it's kind of straightforward. But the arithmetic is actually too slow. So we have, right now, we have three implementations of real algebra number in proof assistant, two in Isabel and one in Cork. Among these three, the one and also the core version is done by a speaker, Cyril Coulton, like from yesterday. And uh, among the three, uh, among the three implementations, the one by uh, Ring TMS group is probably the most efficient one. But even their implementation takes like 20 seconds to compute the sum of cubic, uh, and the, the sum of cubic root from one to six. So this has degree two hundred and forty three of them, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, like maybe a bit less, eighty one. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Yeah, but so the, the idea is that if we do the uh, arithmetic exactly, so the the deciding polynomial will grow very, very fast. And uh, their implementation is uh, kind of very efficient. They based on their, it's like 70K number of proofs in Isabel. They use some advanced uh, factor, fact, <coughs> polynomial factorization techniques like to minimize the deciding polynomial. But still, it's kind of slow. And even Mathematica like, fails to give an answer if we want to sum the cubic root from 1 to 7 within like 30 seconds. So what can we do? 
So first, the, suppose with AD we have a number of, we have a set of sample points. What we need to do at least we need to be able to evaluate the sign of polynomials uh, at each sample point. And in this case, actually, we may not need exact uh, algebraic arithmetic. We just need to know the sign. So and in this case, we can do better. And what we are do is we can just use the sperm particle theorem we mentioned at the beginning of this talk. So we don't use it as a decision procedure to for like uh, for all first order formulas. So we just use it as a sign determination procedure. For in this case, we just do it for univariate polynomials. And the idea is that because by the definition of real algebraic number we have in a proof of system, we know that this number is the only root within this interval. So that the sign of this polynomial at some real algebraic number alpha is just the task query of Q P over this interval A B. And this can be efficiently computed without using exact uh, algebraic arithmetic. So in this case, actually, we have implemented this uh, sign determination procedures. And uh, so, I, uh, so as you can see that we can design the sign of x minus 1 at uh, the point of uh, square root of 2 without using exact algebraic arithmetic. Okay, so we now we have this sign determination procedure. What do we do next? So here we are just considering uh, the univariate case. How can we solve this univariate first order formulas? So for the universal, this is essentially the base case, which is it's essentially root isolation. So given a set of univariate polynomials, if we can find the root of all the polynomials, then we know the sales, we know the, we can construct the sample point and then we can evaluate. And uh, as I mentioned, the sperm task theorem is essentially a generalized version of sperm theorem. With sperm theorem, we can compute the number of real root within some interval. So essentially, Sturm theorem is a uh, root isolation. We can use Sturm theorem to do root isolation if we start with a big enough interval. But the thing is that actually root isolation is a highly, has been researched a lot over the past 40, 50 years, and the, so although we can implement some naive root isolation strategy within Isabel, but uh, still we want to use efficient external ones, and then we just check if these roots are all the roots of this polynomial. So it will be easier to check than to find. Okay, then this is the idea of how we solve the univariate case, the univariate universal case. So if to solve this, we just get the set of univariate polynomials. And then we send this to external algebraic uh, computer algebra system and then we get the roots from them. Like they are not trusted. We don't know if they are roots or not. And then with task query, we can again check these roots are all the roots of the uh, of the set of polynomials, and then we just <coughs> evaluate the sign of each polynomial over each sample point, and then we can solve the univariate universal case. So, and in the end, we have implemented a 
tactics in Isabel, so which can automatically solve formulas like this. And note that this a little string after this all tag is a certificate we found using uh, external systems. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and for the existential case, things are even easier since we only need a witness. We don't even need to check that uh, we got all the rules from the this from the external systems. So we need just the witness. Yes. And we compare our decision procedure to the one that is implemented in PVS, which is probably the most efficient one based on task case in elimination procedure. And the result is very uh, is very promising. And since in the end, uh, there, even in the univariant case, their decision procedure is of exponential complexity. And uh, our decision procedure is basically root isolation and, uh, and a bunch of, and a linear number of task queries. And so they are linear in essential. And what is interesting is that even we are uh, even we know that checking rules is easier than finding rules, but still, uh, in our implementation, the checking part takes considerable more time than the finding part, which means that our uh, the decision procedure, the sign determination procedure we have within Isabel is still not efficient compared to the procedure they have in Mathematica. <laughs> Okay, now we have the univariant case. The univariant case of CAD in Isabel is solved. What now? So we want to consider the more interesting part, the multivariant case. So the, the case is not solved yet. So here I will just uh, sketch uh, our idea. And uh, I hope this will be beneficial to uh, other systems. So the idea is that uh, first, what we need to consider is, again, sign evaluation. So in the univariant case, we use task query to evaluate the sign of a univariant polynomial at real algebraic point. But uh, for the multivariant case, at least we need to be able to do the, like, the sign of a multivariant polynomial at some uh, sample point of like uh, high dimension. So how can we do that? So if we pretend, if we are doing the way we are doing in the univariant case, so we are essentially yield with the field Q ex extended by one rational, by one algebraic number, and in this case, we are we need to do algebraic arithmetic, which is something we don't want. But actually, we can do it kind of a lazy way, which is we treat this algebraic number uh, alpha as some symbolic indeterminate with some constraint. And then we do polynomial arithmetic. So the core idea is something uh, in task queries, we need to we need to compute some remainder sequence, and uh, so essentially, what is a, a mode operation over two polynomials, and then under some assumptions, we can lift this operation. So we ra so rather than doing arithmetic in Q alpha, we can do the arithmetic in Q, and in this case, we can eliminate uh, exact algebraic arithmetic. So in the end, we have implemented this idea. So now we have a 
procedure to design the sign of a bivariate polynomial at real algebraic point. So uh, for the multivariate case, it's still in, pro it's still in progress, but uh, we believe that the idea should be very similar to the bivariate case. Okay, now we have a procedure to evaluate the sign of the polynomial at those sample points. And uh, what do we need to do next? So remember that the CAD algorithm is essentially three parts, the projection phase and the base and the lifting phase. So from the projection phase, we are getting a sequence of polynomials with different number of variables. And then in the base case and the lifting phase, we start with uh, sample points in dimension one, and then we leave it to higher dimensions. So uh, other tricky part with this uh, CED is that in the lifting phase, in the base and lifting phase, we may need to deal with uh, root isolation with real algebraic arithmetic. That is something we really want to avoid. How can we do that? Although I know some certificate implementations that can do this kind of uh, this kind of root isolation efficiently, uh, but none of them are easy to implement in either bill. So in the end, I believe, although it's not implemented yet, in the end, I believe uh, we can have this sample point and then we just check if this sample point are the all the roots and the sample point of this uh, sequence of polynomials is kind of we are checking solutions uh, against some uh, triangular form. Finally, it's about the so for now, we consider the base and lifting phase soft, and now it's about the projection part. Although we want to do the projection part in a certificate-based way, uh, but still, I I didn't manage to find a good certificate for such part. So in the end, we decided to uh, formalize this to certi to certify this part inside Isabel. So and uh, so actually so this is this is a um, delineability theorem we presented at the beginning informally at the beginning of this talk and uh, we have formalized this theorem in bivariate case and the proof relies on the fact that a rule root of a polynomial continuously depends on its coefficient. And uh, to prove that, we use uh, so-called uh, Roche theorem in complex analysis. So this, so this is some finish. This something has been finished. Also, there's potentially there's another route to do that, which requires uh, implicit function theorem. And uh, but at the time I consider this question, I don't it doesn't seem to be available in the uh, library, but now I know that the implicit function theory is actually has been uh, proved by Fabian in his ODE entry in the archive of formal proofs. So that potentially there's an other route to prove this delineability theorem. So that's overall just my the sketch, as I said, is not finished yet, but uh, the plan is just uh, to verify the projection part and uh, use a certificate-based way to solve the base and the lifting part. And so undergoing formalization effort is just to, uh, is the multivariate sign determination. Uh, so the bivariate case is already solved and uh, we are doing the multivariate case 
So the big difference, the essential uh, difference is that in either bill, there's a bivariant, uh, there's a univariant polynomial library, and there's a multivariate one. These two are kind of different. So we are, for the bivariant and univariant, we are just using the univariant library. But for the multivariate one, we need to do something uh, extra. So we are trying to uh, get used to the multivariate library. And then what we need to do is uh, multivariate sub-resultant. This is what is necessary for the projection phase. Uh, so it's actually something inside this projection operator. And uh, that kind of formal proofs has already the univariance of resultant. So what we are doing is just to lift this to multivariant case. So still, the sketch, although it's not finished, but we know that uh, like using this, we are only need to deal with polynomial arithmetic and we can avoid costly algebraic arithmetic. So some Finally, some remark. So in this talk, I have sketched uh, the idea of dealing with uh, nonlinear real formulas in a proof assistant. And uh, especially, I believe, although it is possible, but formalization is still very time consuming. So I hope we can uh, explore this certificate based way, especially considering those uh, those decision procedures, they, are, they have been studied for years and uh, has been implemented in computer algebra system and they are very, very sophisticated. And there are some low level uh, optimizations which probably can never be done if we are doing the similar things in a proof system. So in the end, I think we uh, probably need to do some certificate and uh, it will be very flexible because each time if we switch one external over to another, we don't need to do anything else. But if we want to formalize everything in a proof assistant, so every every time we want to change the code, we probably need to change the proof. Another remark I want to make is that uh, when following the papers from the computer algebra community, I found that a lot of the authors, they tend to prototype their ideas in system like Maple. And uh, the reason I guess is probably that in, in Maple there are already a lot of subroutines and the object uh, like algebra real algebra number, they have already been very efficiently encoded and the sub, uh, sub procedures like root isolation, so uh, factorization, polynomial factorization or the resultant, sub resultant, they are all there. So in this case, the authors can quickly prototype their ideas. But I think the good thing is that actually in Isabel, we are uh, about to have similar things in the archive formal proofs, although it may not be as efficient as the subroutines in computer algebra system, but uh, something like multivariate polynomials, like root counting, polynomial factorization, group boner basis, and even ODE stuff, they are already there in the archive. So, and the, the archive is very easy. Entries in archive are very easy to refer, so we can just build our formalization on the top of these entries. And then, yeah, things will be much easier. So in general, I think we can expect the more verified uh, computations in the future. Okay, that's all. Any questions or comments? Oh, <laughs> uh, so you said that uh, standardable algebraic uh, decomposition in the univariate case has been solved. Yeah. So you showed us the universal and existential. Yeah. Arbitrary quantifier alternation. In the univariate case, there is just one quantifier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's just one quantifier because. Uh, it's not actually quantified elimination. We are just dealing with closed uh, formulas. So in the universal case, there has there can only be one quantifier. <laughs> yeah. So you went from univariate to bivariate. Uh huh. Then you started with bivariate. Right? No, 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 no. What's the how, 
uh, what's the, the uh, so to go from bivariate to multivariate, uh, what's the, what, what, what's the extra work? Going one to two or two? Uh, that's essentially, we need to play around the multivariate library in Isabel. So univariate and bivariate, they are just based on the univariate library. At the multivariate case, we are potentially dealing with uh, arbitrary number of variables. So, mm, yeah, I can imagine there are some engineering uh, difficulty, maybe tricks here, but uh, I think they should be manageable. <laughs> You gave some performance numbers comparing to the other ACL, uh, yeah. and uh, PGS. Yeah. How does your your performance compare to one model or uh, something that doesn't have any formal proof? It's okay. It should be much. Yeah, ratio is it's yeah. It should be yeah. Maybe like a thousand or that because in. Isabel, we are the polynomial arithmetic we have is not that optimized. Like in mathematics, they are using um, uh, Fourier transform to do efficient polynomial multiplications. But in Isabel, we just uh, the naive implementation. So, like as you can see, that the root isolation itself, like uh, like this e x seven. So the nine, this thirty eight second is the one we doing. Proof like the certificate searching and checking together, and the second, the uh, 34 is something we just do the checking. So, actually, in this case, the checking takes much more time than the searching, and so yeah, I guess the performance gap is still very big, but uh, that is something we have for now. Eh? So there's also the and Hormander approach that's implemented in Paul White. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, actually, I don't benchmark that. I don't benchmark with that yet. But uh, according to the paper, I think the performance should be not very good. But uh, yeah, probably I, I should benchmark against that. But uh, based on the paper, and uh, I believe the PBS one is the most efficient one. So I just benchmark against PBS. So what is the EX? Like, what are these forms? Uh, these are in the paper, but it's kind of uh, some, a little bit, some medium size uh, problems. So it's, it's there in the paper. Yeah. Are they, is it like a specific form? Or is it, is it just some random example? Some random example, yeah. <laughs> cool. um, is this being used in the AFP or in any Formalization projects or sort of tested on? Not yet, although it's kind of it's still exper experimental because we need the, the Mathematica to do the, we to need to link it. And probably not every people want to have a Mathematica installed on their, <laughs> the, on, on their laptop when they are doing the build. So probably, so they are not, uh, it's not uh, used a lot yet. Yeah. I'd be curious to know how it, like, how it works in practice. Yeah. yeah, in in Isabel, we already have the, the one just based on sperm theorem by uh, Manu Ibo that is available, and uh, the sum of square method. And I think for now, people are just using these two methods when they are facing nonlinear formulas. But uh, yeah, in the end, we hope to have a, a yeah certificate like a. Really, some better techniques to to deal with nonlinear formula, but uh, yeah, maybe in the end we may want to have some external solver other than Mathematica because it's too expensive. <laughs> okay, maybe we should wrap it up there. Let's uh, thank Wendell again. Okay, thank you.